This is the 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 So maybe we can start then. Uh, okay. Yeah. So thanks to Alec and Chris for reminding us of this workshop. Uh, so I'll be talking about the tools that I was developing while working on my main project. Uh, so I won't be talking about uh, the actual project, but this kind of came up uh, as side projects of those. <coughs> so now, yeah, when we're designing again you know, origami, we use CatNail. And then there is a procedure that we take that takes us from the initial design uh, to the final order. And uh, usually this is kind of, it's not really certain rules that you all uh, follow. Um, so everyone has a different approach and, and there's a lot of heuristics involved with this process. So and I, there's another reflective process as well, which is very managed. So I was getting uh, tired of all those processes and then just really trying to also make it more concrete. So while I was made, working on my main project, uh, several tools were coming up. Uh, the first one is called AutoBrain. Uh, the other one is a simulation tool. And the final is to actually prepare the staples for order. 
and also interface with other tokens. So I'll show a movie that Sean made <laughs> when he was he was trying to kind of, uh, start with my design and then show how it should design for acceptance. So you have a scaffold that's routed and then you do auto staple. And after that, you need to break these orders. You can see uh, these are each of those that you cannot order. <coughs> you need to break them so that they are less than 60 phase bound. And you can see it's a very manual process. And then there's some heuristics involved. You try to make, for instance, like 14 phase stretches in every polygon. Uh, let's go here. It's a very tedious process if you um, try to do this manually. Um, I'll just cut it here. <coughs> so what I did is I built a tool that actually gets this auto stapled structure and then turn it into a uh, design final product with all the staples that are broken and ready for order. And also it's a concave tool uh, based on the color here and you can tell whether those actually staples are good uh, based on some thermodynamic uh, criteria or not. So I'll just start with a simple design just to show how, actually how uh, this works and the algorithm and uh, all the data structure behind it. Uh, this tool. So there, there's an auto stapled uh, scaffold here. So the blue is the scaffold, and then the gray, grays are those, the only those that needs to be broken. <coughs> so I'm starting. I'm just picking on this one, the one in, so that's color red. So I'm just showing different variations that we can break this. We can break either like this. Or this way, and there are so many variations that you can do. But again, it's something that's kind of manual, and you just do it. Uh, so let's say if we break these regions, then we need to make sure that uh, in order to still preserve the connectivity between this strand and this strand at this location, then you need to maintain this crossover here. So there's also some constraints involved. If you break these ones, then make sure that you don't break these ones. So for instance, you didn't break here, so that means you can actually break this one. So there's those kind of constraints involved. <coughs> and then it's not only just one oligo, and this is the simplest, just it's not even a design. There's other oligos that you need to break. So the question was, uh, can we actually turn this problem into a, uh, a more general computer science problem? Uh, represent this with a, with a data structure that already is in, the, uh, in computer science. So actually we can, uh, this turns into a problem. It's like a graph, short step problem. We can actually represent each oligo as a graph, and each node in the graph will be the potential breakpoints, which are represented by something like uh, spheres here. And not represent all of them, but it will be too dense. <coughs> so actually, you can represent this as a graph, and the edges will tell you whether uh, the score is associated with making those tables. So I'm not again representing all this because it will be too dense here. So for instance, this will be one potential solution. So this will give you this staple, and this staple, this breaking, and this staple, and this staple. And the edges will have some kind of score. <coughs> or this is another solution, for instance. And the, the score associated making breaking this oligo itself will be just the sum of uh, all the edges. But then we have different oligos. <coughs> like I was saying, in this breaking pattern, you have also constraints associated with this problem. Let's say if you break in this region, then you don't want to break here. So you have also constraints. Let's say I break in this region here for this solution, then I cannot break here. <coughs> so this is one potential solution for this green oligo. And there's a purple oligo that is circular. So the starting point can be any. Like with these ones that are already broken, you know the five prime and three prime. For these ones, you don't know. So actually, you need to look at all the possible solutions for this. And let's say according to the criteria, uh, while searching for all these, so this is the best place to break and then make a five and three prime here. And so <clears throat> the question is, what are the edge weights? What will be the edge weights in this representation? So there was a paper that was published in 2012, Sigma Nguyen pre-designed uh, paper uh, from this lab. 
that has certain rules. And these are all heuristics. So they were trying to apply to certain set of structures, different heuristics. They call them rule one, rule two, rule three, rule four, rule four. But these are all heuristics, and then they are trying to uh, identify what rule actually is. Actually, my starting point was uh, this paper. I said maybe I can just put those turn actually those heuristics, put those heuristics into this into the edges here, and then try to automate the process. They could start like this, but then I decided actually we can turn this into a more quantitative tool. It's independent of any heuristics or anything, just based on the uh, DNA thermodynamics that we already know that has been shown really well. So let's say I break in these two parts here. So the model that I'm representing, there will be a hybridization term, just a space pairing. Uh, so there are stretches here of double stranded regions that are broken by the crossovers. There's a continuous stretch here. There's another continuous stretch here. So these will be the favorable terms. But then you're also bringing distance, distance regions in the scaffold together. So there's some kind of some cross associated with that. There will be like a loop closure. Uh, huh? So you can actually have uh, these type of terms here. Uh, I usually call these ones intrinsic terms, uh, and these are the kind of coupling. But actually, this is working in the negative way, coupling term. Uh, so these will be favorable term, the green regions, but blue will be actually there will be penalty associated bringing these things together. So you can write the total energy as the sum of the intrinsic terms for the each double stranded continuous region segments, and also the coupling term, which is actually a penalty. So this this. Terms are not enough just by themselves. You have to include also the encounter probability of this oligo uh, with the scaffold itself, which is which is a function of the concentration and it's just uh, scales with the law of concentration. <coughs> we can just make it a compact form like this. So there will be let's say n terms for this. This will be n minus one terms, and then this only one term per oligo. So it's a favorable term. And this is unfavorable. Uh, that would be an unfavorable term uh, because you're bringing distant regions uh, in the scaffold together. So this would be uh, one less than the number of terms here would be one less than the intrinsic terms here. So, so the, actually, what the way it works is uh, that you can kind of imagine. So it tries to extend. So after a, let's say here you come here and then you have this. Uh, you know, uh, Unfavorable term, and then you go here, and then you have block here, and you go to the next term, and then you try to go as far as possible. And the reason is that there is a cost associated with this. To compensate that cost, you try to make this as long as possible. Uh, and also, what this term does is this is even more unfavorable. So let's say we break this oligo here, and then now you have two oligos from this one oligo. So the probability of having these two oligos. Coming, coming, having together and then approaching the scaffold is higher than you break them actually, and then these two uh, coming to the scaffold separately is, is a lower, a lower probability and higher energy associated with that. So it's ideal that you have all these different segments coming in one oligo together. And the probability of holding of this, uh, this oligo, assuming it's a two state process and there's no uh, coupling or cooperative term associated with other oligos will be just this. And then the probability of the, having that structure will be just the multiplication of all the probabilities, saying that all the, assuming all the oligos are independent from each other. And we can just take the log, and this will be like the log likelihood. And the reason why we do this is it's, it's much easier to have as a, to present this problem as a sum, summation than a product. Going back to the graph representation, so this will be the uh, edge weight. So to be, like I said before, it's much easier to represent this as a subsummation than a product. Uh, <coughs> okay. The next question is, the, what would be the break positions? Uh, so what are the nodes uh, for 
this presentation. So there's one class of breakpoints I call them crossover X step. So these are the crossovers um, for the simple for the for the yeah, uh, stable strands. There's another word like the potential breakpoints like the scaffold crossovers or the rest. But so for instance here all three means anything that is at least three days away from the um, crossover regions. So this kind of continuous segments. Can we, I said I have also all two, uh, just takes longer time, but all three is, is what I usually prefer. I guess, yeah. So for instance, if I pick all three, uh, that I was showing here, there are constraints, there were constraints associated with the other representation. So they'll be all gone and the problem actually becomes a short spread problem for each, independent of each other. So it's just on a single solution that it will provide. But if you have the X step, now you have constraints. And the best way that that was used to solve this is actually I would generate, instead of the short spread, I would generate several short spreads uh, for this, a short spreads. And from this point, uh, so yeah, going back to the cache step, actually I will first pick randomly one of all of those, and then I will generate k short stats. It can be when I say k, it can be ten short stats. Uh, it's not on a single one short spread, but kind of other short spread that are close in score to the short spread. And from that I pick one random one. I say this is the solution. Now I have constraints here. That means I cannot break this point. And then oh, I pick another random one, I pick this one, and I create a solution. Now I break in this point, that means I have another constraint that's transferred. And then I do the same thing. Now, given the constraints, I find a new solution for this. And then I repeat this like n times. You can choose there. And I pick the best solution out of this. Let's say this is the best solution. So the recommended setting that I would suggest is I uh, actually combine the day, these two together, it's step and all three. And once you run the program, you will see that it actually is step dominates for the reason that I was explaining in the beginning. Uh, okay. Like these terms here, uh, this is just because of the how the energy works, it actually the X step becomes the uh, kind of converging solution. The reason why I put all three there is because because of the constraints, sometimes it's not possible to find a solution uh, this approach. So this kind of allows you to find a solution. At least well, some of the uh, solutions will have an all three. And so if I can just run the program this way. So this is the auto break pi, and then you give the design. And this is actually the default rule, and then you give a sequence uh, code. Uh, if you're using P8064, you just put it there. Or you can just provide actually a text file with a sequence to your different sequence, and it will give you the solutions. Also, you can do a sequence permutation, meaning that, uh, so in this design, we don't know actually where the, so the sequence start position is arbitrary because it's a circular scaffold. So we can actually permit the sequence and try to find the best permutation for the sequence. And then you can also uh, rank different designs that you have already done before in speeding them. So what I have found is that uh, sequence permutation can take a really long time. Uh, actually, it's not so necessary, but what I usually do is I would make one solution based on one starting point, and then I would feed in that the solution to itself to the program and do a read-only permutation uh, to find the best kind of permutation sequence. And then there are other constraints, like uh, this can be changed, but the maximum stable length is 60 and minimum stable length is 40. And you, there's actually other functions in the program, but um, I don't actually use them. You can optimize in a different way instead of the, the free energy uh, score that I, I, I was shown. But uh, this is what I think. Again, we verified this tool with many different structures, and it works really good. And then this will be the way that you would use. Yeah. 
you want to do a presentation, let's say you already break this design, you just speak into the program, and you say read on me, you need to permit, and how many times you want to permit, and permit. So I'll just show it, uh, just one example here. So this is the activity program, I get this kind of result. So every although is um, colored based on the effective TM value. Uh, it's calculated from the free energy that I was showing you earlier. And then usually the same region is the, it's usually the blue. Uh, blue is not blue, like a low TM. Red is a high TM, which is blue. And then you see there's one here because the, these only goes are kind of short because of that TM value is lower. So what I usually sometimes do is that I go here, I make these parts get rid of these crossovers, make them a bit longer. Or here in this region, you will see that there are so many short fragments, like two days, two days, two days fragments here, that are not really good to have, very short fragments. Uh, so I sometimes change those and make, get rid of those two days uh, fragments and then make it continuous. Because these are the regions that actually you're bringing very far uh, scaffold regions together for your design. Because uh, I need also this kind of tool that tells me where which regions can be problematic. I change this. I usually what I do is I make another design like this. Actually, since there's only a few changes here, a few changes here, I just order it together. Uh, so if you look at the final ones, it's red here. This is a bit more red compared to the this design here. Uh, I usually get that all of them. You have any concerns like that? And the second part is that uh, is the, the simulation tool. Um, for my main project, I'm actually a career project. Uh, you, I was making lots of different designs, and you need to be really sure uh, beforehand. Before I order, actually, the design that I, I make has the geometry that I always expect. And I use such a tool. Uh, so what I need is actually I have a design here. I turn into a model very quickly. And so we use uh, uh, we use Homdi. Actually, we use Homdi to build this program. And then thanks to Pablo, uh, who was a poster in our lab, uh, he introduced Homdi uh, to to our, our lab, and then uh, he helped, he helped us also get started with this project. So the, the simulation part consists of two parts. The first part is the rigid body. So having this design, uh, so we represent this design is in terms of again graphs, like the previous problem. Uh, and then we would apply a depth depth first search to identify regions that are strongly connected um, based on certain criteria, and then we classify them into different rigid bodies. And it will look something like that. First, blow up. And then after that, we'll bring things together. And then the second part is once this uh, every rigid body is in register uh, in 3D space, <coughs> then we continue to the next step to the post point simulation. So in the rigid body simulation, so this is time zero. Uh, this is what we get from Cadena, the coordinates. We just build on that, we make the bonds. So there's only a single bond here. Uh, harmonic bond to your rigid bodies, which are connected. And after that, it's an expansion. And the reason why we do that is, um, we, if we try to start from that initial state, the open times with different designs, they could easily clash, and then the program wouldn't be able to actually continue. So the goal of this initial step, actually the rigid body part, is trying to prepare for the uh, force frame part. And then, I do an expansion here, and then still some of the bonds are on, and there are fake potentials here to make this happen. And the second part is like slowly bring the things together, which is what is. Then I've turned on the soft repulsion terms, just the Gaussian repulsions, so it's not too hard. And then, and then after the final, I turn on the hard repulsions, just the linear terms. <coughs> and after that, I Go with the Langevin dynamics just with the rigid body. 
I just keep showing it. That's what happens. Second part the first instrument simulation. So you can see that things are more fine now. Uh, you see more chilling. <laughs> so I'm going to go over the model for the post play part. Like in the rigid body part, there's actually, again, rigid body is here, but they are smaller. There's a single, I call it single stranded equilibrium. It's a phosphate in the base. And then there's another one, double strand with nucleotide. It has two phosphates and a base. So this is 3-bit and a 2-bit. And then there are harmonic bonds between, so there's one double strand nucleotide here, another one here. Associated with that, and these are fixed bonds. This is which part. And then there's one harmonic bond between a single strand nucleotide. To a double strand nucleotide. And just three, we need to, yeah, we bring two of them together. There's the axial term to put the, to put, keep the double stranded uh, kind of stick. So it's, it's like a person's length uh, parameter. Let's say the harmonic angle. And this is the z axis. So if you look from x, y, and turn it over. From the top view, you need an angle term to keep the you also need the uh, dihedrals. And also we we also don't want any collision, so we, we have the process terms removed, so we don't want this to happen. Um, and this is just I'll show you a few examples. This is the most Dramatic one, the icosahedron, um, which I was mostly trying to make my simulation work in the beginning with this one because up there there are three scaffolds, this is huge. And then you can see, uh, you cannot even tell what is what from this design. And the initial stage is something like this there's all these 66 bundles packed together, there's weird bonds. And if I just start from that, if I don't have any the initial part, which is body part, it's going to go anywhere. What I do is so when I do this expansion, actually, um, so I'm actually projecting everything on a sphere in the initial part. And the way I estimate the sphere radius and uh, the distance between each part is uh, just based on the geometries. Uh, I, get, I get the uh, kind of the lengths of each rigid body, get the maximum, and then I do an overestimation of what will be the sphere, and then project onto it, and then let it equilibrate, find, well, put the bonds in register, and put the final state. This is first vector. Uh, so with both preferences, I'm just showing only one here. It's the 90 degree one. And this is really fast. It's just a few minutes. It's the, it's the random one. Uh, I don't know what this is minus four, but I just <laughs> tweet, <laughs> try one to many. So there are three segments of uh, one to many protractors connected to each other. I just like this. Yeah, this design. And then I'm just showing something that I actually designed uh, for, for a collaboration with uh, Rail Lab and UCSF. Um, yeah, I did. I just needed this kind of tools to actually see where the handles are. Just, uh, we attach things on it and then. Ideally, I'll put also different things on so that I can actually see how they look like. Because uh, when we discuss actually about designs, we usually just talk, oh, what should be the distance between things? And then we can deploy things like this big, and then I should have this much space. Because so I needed this kind of tool to actually graphically, it's much easier instead of like sticking. And, and this is actually how the design looks like. On the Again, uh, uh, this is a very simple code. I'm just repeating the JSON file. And you can actually see what's going on with the VMD, just the dash VMD. And this is to circularize the scaffold, because in the design, in, uh, <coughs> in the Cardano design, there is a break in the scaffold that you make to say that this is my starting point for the sequence. Uh, but when it comes to fitting into the program, I didn't, I didn't want to make any assumption it's a circular, because it might not be a circular. You can make, Kind of design. So, so I would suggest you put on this. 
have serverless, so it connects the two edge tokens together. And the final one is the uh, uh, so I mean, it's just something that I needed. I guess maybe you, you will find also useful. I know that I would make a whole bunch of designs, but slightly different from each other. And at the end, what I would I would like to minimize the cost of ordering for these orders, um, and I would want to organize everything, everything into a different working style so that I can make a final structure myself. So the output of this tool would be there been an echo instruction for the left side echo uh, robot. Uh, if you want to do manually, use your kind of instructions in a uh, Linux file play format. Uh, this is useful for the echo play uh, robot. And again, it's just feeding the all the JSON files that you have that's associated with that project or whatever. And then you get the sequence, whatever sequence you have. It's usually the common keywords that we use, the P something, P something. Uh, you can also put your sequence, again, as I said, with a text file. So there, yeah, this is what gives you some CS file, first one. And you can feed into this website echo. Uh, so that's quite nice. It's cool. We just discovered recently, but. Very nice. If you want to use the Linux software uh, format, uh, so everything will be organized into different structures here. These are different structures that you want to order, but they are just slightly different from each other. That's what I was meaning in the beginning. I would make a few changes, uh, and then I would just order them together because there would be like small changes in the structure. Still small, small rows. And each color here will be different stocks. And you can see what other stuff here. And just it's kind of ready for order. It's order. So yeah, these are the tools. Uh, there are more tools. I mean, there are more tools coming uh, as we add more. Uh, this wasn't like a uh, our initial idea. Like oh, let's build tools and then let's have uh, let's release them all together. But they are coming uh, along the way as we need them. Uh, but we decided to put them in a. Uh, on a server, and this is very easy to use. Uh, you have everything in a Docker, so that, uh, and we also can be a we have a server that you can uh, that will interface with users to a uh, web browser, and you will be able to like drag your designs and then get the output. Uh, and then there will be some projects. Uh, it's a very nice interface. We have a programmer uh, in the lab working on that. And also, my main project actually. Uh, is it's a crying project. Um, so uh, what I'm doing is now is actually interfacing this special simulation tool with the crying uh, project. Um, and also it's both building these tools and also feeding back into the different projects that crying projects so that it can be useful. And I want to thank Sean uh, for supporting <laughs> me in the lab. Uh, these are the lab numbers. Um, so Eric is a PhD student who's uh, involved with the uh, verification of these tools. Uh, he made several plus of designs uh, to verify that Autobrake was really good. Uh, so we tested Autobrake on several designs that were challenging. And just looking at the papers, uh, it was a bit hard to pull. And we actually showed that with just a single design, you can be a great folder. Uh, so we apply to both uh, honeycomb lattices or security square lattices. We had really good success with that. And these are the Brian uh, collaborators. I just know like this. Okay. Okay, I have some questions. From the Deeds paper, I remember the root tree was the good one, yes. having many half crossovers. Yeah. But in your design, you show it in the slides, maybe you have it, but I didn't see half crossovers in your design. Mm -hmm. um, is it something required or is it not required? Actually, it converts that to the slides. But that I couldn't see in the slides, maybe it's missing. Or I can show in the kind of last example, like this one. You see? This is all 
Oh, to so their app. Yeah. So it kind of converts that. So it's called the way they of China. Mostly it's a good one. So yeah. it is more of a can come from kind of dynamics, which is yeah. a tool to solution to this like this. Um, but then you, you you know that there's a constraint issue, right? When you, when you break things, you want to make like a 14 or something. And it's yeah, a, I struggle with that a lot. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes you, know, you make a design, uh, you do that, uh, you want to change something a bit again. Sometimes you go over and there's all these annoying parts. But they were based before that. Yeah. Put it into a program just to for you. Yeah. Um, very interesting. Um, I have a question about this auto break um, algorithm. Is it possible to add more criteria to tune? The other criteria, yes. not just using the state related. Yes, yeah. So I did. I have lots of functions there. I didn't show them. Length. So actually, you can provide length as a. So you want everything to be around like 40, something like that. 45. You can put it as well. Um, so how, how are we supposed to specify the criteria? Should we, I can, should I we can. specify the weight of each criteria? So well, I can show. Uh, I put a lot of trash there. Let's say you want, you want to, uh, I call it G length. It's the glass of it. Uh, so there is another parameter called func. It's a function. So by default, it's DG. Let's say it's DG. And you can combine different functions together, so it's kind of multiplied all together. Uh, and meaning here, uh, there's the free energy, it's the standard state in the Celsius. So most of these experiments, all these parameterization, they were done at 50 Celsius. Uh, so you actually do melt, and then people get all these uh, parameterized, all these values, and it's uh, the Celsius. The way they project this, kind of the they do linear extrapolation, that's why it works best. But then what you can do is like you have each parameter, and you wanna specify also the length. The length. So say I want everything to be put by around port by. So what it does is it's actually trying to it's a glassing the flow distribution, it's centered around port five, and it will try to optimize that. So let's say you have something else here. Um, I want to make sure that everything has a 14 base stretch, right? Um, I forgot about that one. Uh, but there's all these rules together. Let's say I want also DM to be around, on average, the people. G, DM. So you can combine different ones with that. G, DM. I can change the weight of each criteria. Like, uh, I, I can. I want this this this, this distribution to, to be G, this distribution for this possible. Yes, but I, I will yeah. have to wait for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's possible to do that. Uh, uh, right now, the program is not really configured to do it but like that, but yeah, you can. You may not have an interface, user interface, uh, all together, and then put weights in different functions. You can even add your own function, or whatever you want. Yeah. But what I was say is that uh, this is, I mean, this works really good. Even just without anything. If you
you want to get just get started with something and just want to order, uh, but we'll have all this. Yeah, can have all this. Yeah. There's so many functions that I was just trying to make business sense and all that. But again, like I was saying, if you can just combine, then you really have an interface. I have a very practical question yeah. that uh, I hope I will uh, speak for the workshop participants. So, like, yeah. uh, can, you, can you go to the workshop for the website? So uh, let's say uh, you want to learn how to do things. <laughs> like which, which order would you recommend to go over? Because we had you know, Sean's presentation and your presentation, and things didn't work yesterday because of the image, but now we have everything yeah. working. Yeah. So the question is, you know, how can what, what can we do? What should we do? First example, isn't it? Okay. This is the making the design first. So if you in the new image, you can just write, you just type. On the terminal, and then it will get you get get another tool. So because yesterday people were having issues getting it, so you just type, and then you'll get the get another tool work. And once we have a design that's auto stable, then it's here. After we do auto stable, we have to provide some of the issues there, which is in the short circuits here. You can see that's not really realistic. You get rid of those. And after that, it's, it's what you do. You just put in the program. You don't even have to put the rule now. You can just get rid of it. This is the default rule. And then you go to see. I don't know if you're all familiar with like, scaffolds, names, and uh, there's P64, there's P16. Uh, there's some other stuff. <laughs> 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 As far as I think, the size is 8064, so just do P8064. And then it will give you a solution. It will create a folder with the uh, auto wait. And you can look at it. After once you run this, it will create a folder. If you run again, it will create another folder with another number. So it will just do one over right and again. And you can go and look in the folder. You will have some new JSON file to that. And in that JSON file, you would Look at the one that has legacy. A legacy. It's not the CN25, but it's not this one. Look at the legacy one. <clears throat> this is the one you can open in Cadmium 2. You can open this in Cadmium 2.5. Uh, but yeah, now we just look at this one legacy.json. And then once you see that, and you pick, you'll find, you'll create a JSON file design. Now 
now you can take this and then you can even go to that folder and just run the simulation. It will be already coming. Yeah, if you want to see, I mean, I always run with the PMP. Also, surprise, just to make sure that. Yeah, the tutorial is just the bottom line. Yeah. 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 We should do this as, yeah, yeah, the stony part that's missing. Stony? Yeah. And then you'll see, you should pop out a mesh for a simulation. Then after that, I will look at the second tutorial in the same way. It's just a different, it's just a different design, but the same workflow. Like you make a design, go to break, you see what. Yeah, the only thing that I'm still working on the tutorial, so we'll add the auto pipe tag. Yeah, you can do that one. Is, but that's but it's all that's more useful when you have several designs completed and you want to find them in quick order. So but that that will be by the end of the. The workshop the tutorials will be yeah. the four. Let's say you made an auto break, but then all the colors are it's color coded uh, based on the TM values of those other ones. Uh, I would go and then this is ready for order. I would color them according to how you want. You might want to color different things separately. And then let's say you may be a one design, you can just try export all those. JSON file, <coughs> final thing if you want. Uh, and then again, you need to put the sequence. Where are these Python files I can find? Is it in the Python files? Like they're in the home directory, everything. But then you'll be able to access because I set the I set them in the in the path. But it's not there, I guess. The new image? Yeah, I will get it. The new one? The new one? Yes. There's a new one. Oh, there will be a new image. So those tools were missing in the previous image. Oh, okay. So now I set the also path so they can just go to terminal, just type this. Uh, if you want to just run Kernel 2, just in, if you want to run Kernel 2.5, which I, mean, I wouldn't recommend now. Okay. That's a question. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. I, I'm very excited to visit Accenture. Like the first question would be, when will we be able to have that? Out. 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 Uh, as soon as possible. <laughs> so we have, so like Carol mentioned, we have a yeah. full-time software developer and we've been working on building a web interface. So uh, right now, I think you guys can use the images I even after the workshop. Right? Yeah, I guess. So all the tools, are, they're not going to change. It's just whether you can upload it to a website versus just running it from an app on the terminal. So, Already the tools are, are done. And so that's the advantage of coming to the workshop right here now. Right now. Uh, for the more general release, we're, we're aiming. I guess I can ask. Maybe Charles can answer. Before <laughs> <laughs> end of this year. We're trying to do by the end of the year. Yeah. By the end of the year, approach that. At least we should have, I think, hopefully, uh, like a web server running at least a year with the next. Paper might have to publish it. Right. That's my guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll have, have a, a, I mean, we're, we want to get a, our preprint out like probably in January. So if you just follow, uh, I don't know if you guys use Twitter at all, but we announced, or Facebook, like we have a yeah. uh, account on there. So whenever we need something, we'll publish that there. So it's at least one. We have already some tools for the doctor. Uh, 
So I guess my second question would be like it's very cool for the rapid uh, shift prediction, but uh, have you um, compared it with like previous other simulations or experiments or like previous papers with the same designs or things like that? So the way I was going is to say. The way also, can you repeat the question? Like, uh, oh, I'm sure. Did oh, can oh. you repeat the question because you have the mic? Hi, yeah. So, the question is whether this tool was verified uh, using some data, comparing with existing data. So, when it was the protractors, uh, so I was, because we already have data for those uh, images, so I was comparing with those. Um, so, we actually get the angles that we were supposed to get. Uh, so that was one. Uh, the other, so we're not, the right approach would be actually to use like Clarion data. Actually, when you do Clarion, you shouldn't have any support service. I think we'll get more finer details in probably Clarion. But I think for the, if you want to just get a rough idea how the shape looks like, you know, like twists, uh, I think those are all the good useful. Uh, there's you know the curve design and uh, according to me, the constructor paper. So we ver verified all the designs, all the designs there. Uh, and the other ones, I was showing one structure, the, the hinge structure, they call it hinge. So there are two of them is connected by a tether. Uh, and we will make some more designs just to show that it was uh, the experience and everything. Thank you. I guess my final question. I'm sorry. Uh, the fi fi final one is uh, as I was using Canon, there is a constraint that we cannot uh, hybridize scaffold and scaffold or yes. stable yeah. with stable. Are we able to do that now or is that a problem? <laughs> we can do it 2.5, 2.5. Uh, so 2.5. So uh, the way I would do, I would first make most of things at this right now. Most of things are two, two zero, and then you have a you see the JSON file. And then if you go to the two point five, and you just make that change. Let's say you want to do scaffold, scaffold like a hair or something. It's for it. It's for those kind of specific parts. And then after you can get that, you can feed into the program so the simulation. So when I yeah, I would do do a make a design, use the auto break, and then if you have those special parts, I would add them later. And then do a simulation if you want to see how it looks. So simulation would both find with two files for 2.5 and legacy JSON format. They are slightly different from each other. But it will work with the simulation for both both those. Thank you. Uh, I was curious about the alter function you mentioned, like the alter dragon table. So uh, you're trying to optimize Terminator properties, but the minimum distance between the gradient crossing will reduce the speed, right? I said three will reduce the space. Yeah. There's also all two, if you want to do all two. So we can, like I'm saying, I'm asking if it's just the minimal, so it's the optimal you're trying to do here. Because, like, when we do it manually, we try to have it like an eight. I'm just asking, like, that tree is it like the minimal? Will it be like the optimal? I mean, is, um, is it gonna bind if it does so three things? It's just three, it's usually. Uh, I mean, so the assumption here is that dynamic model treating is that the, it's all independent, right? It can be satisfied. It's not really the case. But just if you look at just a single level, uh, also you're doing a temperature run. Uh, probably the long stream will bind first, it will stay there. So now it's there, it's a different problem now. Instead of it's not really, <coughs> uh, just a single short segment binding to the region, but once it goes there, now it's an easier problem, right? <laughs> so there's, a I mean, there's all, of course cooperativity, and the cooperativity among all of those two. Once there's some of those probably from there, um, and I think there's just a 
Hopefully they end together. It's not really like a one by one kind of deal. Uh, <coughs> it's just a model. I mean, just a model just to for a tweak. Uh, it's not really trying to predict anything, but trying to do its best. Uh, so if you if you're concerned with those kind of options, let's say I want to, I don't want anything to like in the continuous segment. I want only everything between eight and beyond. Or you don't want to even break like those shortcuts that are seven. I just want to keep them. If it's possible, I can put a, uh, like a function that determines that instead of, I think I have that all n. I might have that like all n, and then you define what that n is. I think I, I might have that. I usually, the way I do this, all n put a number. And you can combine with another. So all n a except. So the reason why I separate x step from x step is because I don't want to break those regions. So, so if you do all three, uh, those regions will be eliminated. It's not, you won't put, we'll never break those regions. All right. Okay, well, I have one more question. Sure. It's great. Uh, that's what it's for. Okay. Um, I think your target was kind of stable, I would say static structure, but well, what if you want to have some dynamic structure that have a movement or some freedom to move? Or maybe we take some cutting or flexible structure or what have you. Or before the post grade school. So let's say you have something like a, there are several segments that they are very floppy. Um, for example, some, something that can bend at some crazy constructed junction or let's say or what happens. Try to see that. So let's see that. Um, you should see confirmations. Um, so you should because now those regions are loosely connected. It's not trying to go, the, the first parts are all minimization if you're trying to energy minimize, but then the final step is endangerment. And so it's coupled to a temperature path, and then it's going to keep all the, and the more you run, the run, the more you can actually see different events. Okay, so that's uh, the distribution. And also in the simulation, I didn't, I didn't provide that option, I think. I think I have time. Probably it's like a temperature. What temperature you want to couple with? So if you want to have a higher temperature, so it's, it's more. But you can change the duration of the simulation. Uh, actually, I would for that I would do that in the final step, the course frame part. The switch part is more like prepare. And then after that, if you want to see, so I would say there's one parameter. There's a parameter called CGF steps. So it's like the final steps of this cross train simulation, which is magic. That yeah, is, you might also want to have the point that's going to be the part of it. Sure, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. All right, I think it's time to do the coffee break. So I have one important announcement. Uh, we're going to take a picture. It's very important to take a picture <laughs> because all of us in the picture, we're going to do it right before.